90% of you live in urban areas. You have jobs to keep, mortgages to pay, you send the kids off to school every day. It doesn't make any sense to sell off the house and move off-grid into a bunker to prepare for some weird contingency. I mean, not everybody can be a doomsday prepper. I haven't done that myself, so I get it. So I'm gonna show you how to get yourself and your family ready for likely emergencies without busting the budget and without interrupting real life. In upcoming episodes, we are going to look at some of the coolest things that you can do survival skills wise. We're going to learn about bug out shelters, bug out bags, bug out vehicles, emergency survival shelters made from a tarp, safe retreats, knives, guns, fire! It's going to be very exciting. I'm looking forward to the next several episodes. Hang on a second. Hey, baby. Yeah. Whoa. The generator is working, right? Hello? I'll be right with you. Hold on I-95, power is down. You need to get ready for things that are likely to happen. I'm ready for those things which are bound to happen. What have you got stocked up in your house? Are you ready for a hurricane? Those happen every year. Are you ready for a flood? How about those recent floods in Colorado? Are you ready for a power outage, an ice storm, a blizzard? You need 2,000 calories of food per person per day, and you need one gallon of water per person per day. The government recommends that you stock up for three days, but that's obviously not enough. Look what happened to people when we had those floods in Colorado just recently. It was just a couple of days and they started looting. Now, I'm going to mention this just to illustrate the point that when you prepare for emergencies, you're not just helping yourself, you're helping everybody. Consider this. You've got a couple of days of food in your fridge and your pantry and the floods come along and now you're cut off from any supplies and you have no water. You've got a wife and two kids. What are you going to do? You put yourself in danger by going out into the floods and then going to a store to loot what the guy has there and he might shoot you. Then who's gonna take care of your wife and kids? All of this could have been avoided simply by stocking up some food and water. So I recommend 14 days. The first thing we need to do is get your house in order. And these are all things that you can do as part of your daily routine without disrupting real life. Let's get started. I'm sure you've already got food in your fridge and your freezer and your pantry, but you're not sure if you've got enough to last 14 days for everybody in the family. So we're gonna take care of that very easily and cheaply by buying enough beans and rice that if that's all you ate for 14 days, you'd still be alive. Everybody needs about 2,000 calories a day. It just makes the calculations simple. On average, I think you're gonna be in good shape. Two cups of rice, and two cups of pinto beans, that's about a pound of rice and a pound of pinto beans, that's going to give you about 3,000 calories, 3,200 calories. That's not quite enough for two people. You can open up a can of sardines and a can of salmon. You tired of fish, open up a can of sardines and some chili. And that'll give you about 4,000 calories. Mackerel is about the same way. If you don't like any of these selections, pick something that you like and stick it in the pantry and then walk away from it and only rotate it about once a year if it's commercially canned goods. Don't forget to store your can opener with the goods. You need a gallon of water per person per day. For 14 days, that's gonna be 56 gallons for a family of four. If you can't store water in those quantities, then you're gonna have to look at being able to process your water. So if your municipal water supply gets cut off, you're gonna have to find water elsewhere and then filter it or boil it or process it somehow. That's a lot of beans and rice. So if you had any doubts about whether this was going to be enough for two people, I don't think you should be too concerned about it. Now, I'm not saying that this is an excellently balanced diet. This is an emergency food stock that will last for two weeks. And if you live in an area where you can have a garden, you should have one. And that way you can supplement with fresh stuff or you can supplement with uh, stored stuff from your garden. These acorn squash are several months old. They won't keep forever in your pantry, but they'll keep for a good long time if you don't wash them. And I just wanted to show you how they turn out. I don't waste anything. 
We dried the seeds overnight and we're gonna salt and roast them and they will be delicious. I don't know if you get diet fatigue in two weeks, maybe a little bit, but I'm talking about where it's very severe and you can hardly force yourself to eat. It's so simple to take care of that just by varying your diet a little bit. These turnip greens will make a lot of greens, make a lot of turnips, and it's delicious. Anyway, that's food and water taken care of. Be sure and check out the article at the blog where I'll have a lot more information about this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.